Let's look at the duality of the NBA, okay? You got on one side, you got Kyrie Irving, who's standing up for individual liberty, whether he knows it or not, or maybe he's just like, I'm not fucking taking the jab, and you guys can fuck off. But slowly but surely, the Brooklyn Nets realize that, oh shit, we're paying out hundreds of millions of dollars, and we've been continuously promising a winner, and it's just not working out. So yeah, for home games, you know how we said we're going to be dis distancing you from the team, Kyrie? Yeah, you can start playing home games, so we can start winning again. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. And Kevin Durant's going to be out for a couple of weeks. Oh, fuck. Uh, we're going to have to come to an agreement with you sometime at some point. But um, as of right now, nothing's in place. But Kyrie's not budging. He knows, given enough time, okay, and he is a guy that can definitely weather the financial storm because he has millions and millions of dollars. I made a the shout out to him, okay, during our Novak Djokovic talk a little bit earlier in the week, but when it comes to the biggest names of the people that are, you know, just standing off on the sidelines being like, I'm going to do me, and the NBA is like, no, you need to fucking bow down, and they're like, no, I'll just fucking check out for the year. Why don't you go fuck yourself? He's the biggest name that's attached to this. I think uh, Bradley Beal for the Washington Wizards is still out there and you have Jonathan Isaacs of the Orlando Magic and a couple of other people and a bunch of others have fallen off but now with the NBA talking about mandating boosters it looks like these three guys are going to be down even longer until the NBA gets their head out of their ass or I don't know the fucking league implodes but I'm not hoping for that because I do like basketball it's just that supporting any of these big professional sports league at this point is it like supporting a Lindsay Lohan rehab campaign because you know it might look good in the time leading up to it but eventually they're just gonna let you down so like I said we got the good we got the bad of the NBA and the good we're gonna start out with the good because why not right Nets Irving says he won't reconsider the coup vaccine despite Durant injury stand your fucking ground my dude Brooklyn guards or Brooklyn Nets guard, sorry, Kyrie Irving on Monday reasserted that he won't reconsider taking the jab despite teammate Kevin Durant's knee injury that is expected to sideline him for weeks. Uh, last thing I seen was five to six weeks, so he's going to be out for a minute. And I know the Nets are right close to the top of the East, but the East is incredibly competitive and they were already doing without one of their big three members. And now they're going to be theoretically for most of the games, they're going to be without two of the big three and the other one that's left James Harden let's fucking be honest that guy couldn't carry his own fucking gear let alone a team so they're gonna need all the help they can get so they're gonna have to come to an agreement with Kyrie on his terms although getting vaccinated would make the seven-time all-star point guard eligible to play all Brooklyn Nets games and everywhere else where they have these stupid mandates like out west and if they have any more games to play against division rival uh, the new york knickerbockers there are multiple caveats but we've been over that ad nauseum uh irving said he won't be swayed as his teammate is potentially set to be sidelined for six weeks athletes playing for the new york city professional sports teams are mandated to be vaccinated to play in the city's public venues public venues but you need to be forced to do stuff cool uh, the Nets reversed course last month and are allowing Irving to play in road games. Yeah, because they were losing and people were like, you should probably let Kyrie play. And they're like, no. Oh, wait, we're losing how many games? Oh, fuck. So we need like our second best player to come back. Yeah. Oh, uh, hey, Kyrie, are you doing anything, buddy? That's my decision already. And I'm standing on it. Round of applause. Round of applause for our guy, Kyrie. Congratulations. He repeated that he remains rooted in his decision not to get vaccinated fucking a right okay during your time off during if there's a big long home game stand and they just want to be steadfast in there uh, if you don't get jabbed you can't play here whatever their fucking mongoloidic policy that new york city has you get in contact with novak Djokovic and go on a speaking tour i'm just saying uh, that would do good that would uh, really further the cause because let's be honest uh, for pretty much every other thing that uh, Kyrie irving advocates for we're not on the same side but when it comes to this one and if he wants to be fucking bullheaded about this got my unmitigated support my guy that's what I think comes into a lot of culture and basketball and sports and entertainment. Sports entertainment? Ah, you bring in teams and you bring in situations. Kev's going to heal. Kev's going to be okay. And we're going to have a deal with oh that as his teammates. But in terms of where I'm at in my life outside of this, I stay rooted in my decision. And that's just what it is. I'm not going to be swayed just because the, of one thing in this NBA life. 
that somehow is brought to my attention as being more important than what's going on in the real world. It's just not happening for me, said Irving during a press conference. Oh, when pressed, sorry, on whether he feels pressured to get vaccinated following Durant's injury. Yeah, because it would be one thing, okay? Like if there was a if there was a magic wand that could be waved over these guys and they're vaccinated when they're on the court, that's one thing, okay? And that'd be another conversation to have there, which I would also be against if it was mandated because it's your body, your choice. It's funny how some people like to use that as a rallying cry and then other times oh, they'll just dismiss it because uh, it's not what our side likes, okay, at that point in time. That's always my decision, okay? Never mandate something. If you want to take it, by all means, okay? You assume the risks, you do you. But the moment you force people to do stuff that uh, is irreversible and cannot be revoked at a moment's notice, well, now we got a problem. Irving said he's bothered that his decision is being questioned and that it's almost always framed in the context of his profession, not his personal life. Exactly. Exactly. Again, I respect everyone else's decision. I'm not going to ever try to convince anyone of anything or any of that. I'm just staying rooted in what I believe. And uh, and though we're dealing with this right now with Kev, I just know that I'm protected. Oh, that I'm protected by the organization. I'm protected by my teammates. I'm protected by the doctors I've talked to, and I stand rooted. But what do the experts say? On January 7th, oh my god, a day after the massacre, anyways, uh, prior to his knee injury, Durant said that he wouldn't pressure his teammate to get vaccinated against the coof, and I told him how important he is and how much I want him to play every game, but like I said, I'm not about to force somebody to get the vaccine, like, uh, that's not my thing, so he can play basketball, I'm not about to do that. Durant, I'm pretty sure, is a secretly based individual that's out there. That's just between us. But you'll love to see it. Stand your ground. You can actually make a difference on this one. Is isn't like those uh, very important and very necessary placards that the NBA puts on the sidelines or in the stands that say Black Lives Matter, even though the um, entire league is like 90% black. But you know what? Yeah, you guys are standing up for the little guy on this one. Whereas you have like a, the, a handful of players who are trying to stand up for their own individual rights and liberty and you cast them aside like they're fucking lepers on society no no or you'll just have one of the most uh, hypocritical things that you will ever see in life and that is the nba's um controversial uh relationship with china china you know where nba has a massive streaming deal somebody that they have to kowtow to somebody who ended up um getting fired or getting reprimanded not long after they made a simple statement such as i stand with hong kong and then magically you're you're out tom well what if you take the other side of the issue well let's just hear it straight from the camel's ass Golden State Warriors owner, he's only a 2% owner, he's a minority owner, both in reality and in practice, under fire, by who? Not by the NBA, not by anybody who really matters, not by the decision makers themselves, but he's under fire for saying nobody cares about Uyghurs. And that's in reference to the Muslims in the camps that are out there. Uh, he was very specific, okay? And you can listen to the clip that's on there. Obviously, the Epoch Times has it clipped out. And yeah, this is a the free article that's up there. So feel free if you'd like to listen to it in the context in which he was saying it when he was being interviewed on this podcast that I've never heard of. But we'll just run down his statements here and I'll try to give it as accurate of a description as he delivered it as possible. NBA team co-owner co and billionaire Chatham uh perry pala hapa pala uh, feels like i'm calling a genie is facing internet outrage sort of after declaring that nobody cares about the plight of persecuted uyghur ethnic muslim minority in china's far west Xinjiang region um it's like okay i get what you try i get what you mean in like a cultural zeitgeist way but uh, the u.s government has called it a genocide okay and uh they're at least diplomatically sanctioning the upcoming olympics in beijing so that they actually care like this isn't one of those things where it's like literally nobody cares and you're just trying to big cope on this one by saying nobody cares and it's like actually everybody does care this is one of those things where there's like active measures being taken place to um, address the situation like m many many governments around the world have uh, decried the handling of china's human rights abuses except for the un but the un is the un and you sp can't spell cunt without un so whatever uh, nobody cares about what's happening to the uyghurs okay you bring it up because you care and that's nice that you care the rest of us don't care 
Big Cope. Uh, he said in a podcast that he co-hosts after uh, another host brought up Washington's recent ban on all products from Jianjiang over the use of forced labor. Again, that sounds like some people do care, but him and his billionaire buddies don't care, maybe? I don't know. I'm telling you a very hard, ugly truth. Okay, so... um. That's what he thinks, and then of course he's just projecting that on the rest of the world, but a lot of people are taking notice about this, but whatever. Of all the things I care about, yes, it is below my line. But nobody cares about it because it's below my line, and I have a lot of money and a lot of power, and I'm disassociated and disconnected with the rest of the world. Okay. Uh, the United States and several other Western nations have characterized Beijing's re uh, repressive policies in Xinjiang as a genocide, and the UK's based Independent People's Tribunal, chaired by the distinguished international human rights lawyer Jeffrey Nice. QC, okay, agrees. The abuses including torture, slave labor, forced sterilization, mass, de er, mass detention, surveillance, rapes, forced abortions, uh, the organ harvesting, hair harvesting, literally everything horrific you can think of is happening in these camps, okay? And I've been over this a bunch, but uh, Chatham doesn't care. Chamath? Chap? Cha Charlie. Charlie Perry doesn't care. Or to make another sports reference, Corey Perry doesn't care. But anyways, yeah, uh, it's driven the United States and others to stage a diplomatic boycott to the Beijing Winter Olympics. Well, like I said, uh, Pahatama Thatha, part owner of the Golden State Warriors. Uh, the, like I said, very small part owner. He only owns 2% of the company, but whatever. Uh, pushed back when the third host, venture capitalist David Sachs. Okay, uh, said that the issue was not top of mind for many people. That's not caring. Uh... Perry said, I care about the fact that our economy can turn on a dime if China invades Taiwan. What? <laughs> what? How, how, how so? Is that guy that you voted for in the White House? Somebody, at least. Would send everybody to war so that would change the economy? Okay, would that boost the economy? Would that make it actually better? Would that make it grow? Would that repair it? Okay. Maybe you might be onto something, perhaps? I care about climate change. Oh, okay, so something that's not something that's uh, as immediately affecting so many thousands of people. But, oh, okay, cool. I care about America's crippling and decrepit healthcare infrastructure. You should probably care about the healthcare of the people that are just having their kidneys removed on an hourly basis. Uh, but whatever. Yeah, no, that, that, that that's fair. But what are you doing about it? Uh, you're complaining on a podcast. Okay. Uh, not until we can take our... Oh, take care of ourselves while I prioritize them over us. They're just asking you to give a fuck about people being put in concentration camps. That's all they're saying is just you can walk and chew gum at the same time. But oh, okay, cool. He just probably has shit built in those Uyghur camps. And it would cost him like pennies more to outsource his um, manufacturing to other places. I get it. There's nothing I can do about the Uyghurs, zero, he said in a later episode, which aired on January 15th. The clip of his remarks gathered wide social media attention on Martin Luther King Day, so, uh, that was this Monday, I think, assalamu alaikum, whatever, and sparked a torrent of criticism from lawmakers who took his indifference as a further indicator of the sports league's values profits more than human rights. Oh yeah, because the NBA is just like, what? You want to talk bad about China? That's cool. Oh, what's that? You want us to address the Uyghurs? What's, uh, we're just going to shut up. We're just going to shut up and dribble. That's what we do over here at the NBA. Okay. We, we want no problem here. And he's just a minority owner. Don't worry about that. Anyways. So this is from Rick Scott. Ugh. I've always known that the NBA and many of its owners are happy to put profits over people. Now, at Chamath is saying it plain as day. He doesn't care about communist China is committing genocide against Uyghurs. He doesn't care that millions are sent to forced labor camps, just a concentration camp. He wrote on Twitter, adding, silent is appeasement. Silence is appeasement. Yeah, fair enough. Eh, some broad. Ashley Hinson wrote on Twitter that the American government companies and citizens have to speak with one voice against the CCP's gross human rights abuses and hold them accountable. I guess history will remember those who looked the other way. Nah, the NBA has a pretty good marketing campaign. This is just going to get swept under the rug quicker than anything else because, hey, Steph Curry's probably going to win the NBA or win the uh, MVP award because he's having quite a fucking efficient year and he just broke the uh, three-point record and he's had nowhere near done in his career. So, yeah, um, this ain't going to fucking manifest one way or another. The NBA team 
your, the NBA team quickly sought to distance itself from the internet storm. In a statement on Twitter, it referred to uh, Paolo Malawalha, who owns 10%. I've seen 2%, but whatever. 10 to who gives a shit. He makes millions off of it. Of the Warriors franchise is a limited investor who has no day-to-day -day operating function. Yeah, but he still um, supports the team financially, so whatever. Uh, Mr. Blah, 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 Perry does not speak on behalf of our franchise, and his views certainly do not reflect those of our organization. That's that's funny. Oh, but he had to walk back his comments. I'm re-listening to this week's podcast. Did you do that for the previous weeks as well? Uh, I recognize that some may come across as uh, lacking empathy. I acknowledge that entirely. 45-year-old Sri Lankan-born businessman who came to Canada. Ew, sorry about that. At the age of six, after his family fled for refugee status, and nobody cares about Sri Lankans though, as refugee, my family fled a country with its own set of human rights issues. Yeah, like I said, nobody cares about that though, bro. NBA has faced backlash for its business dealings with China including running a basketball academy in Xinjiang, <laughs> a relationship with the league, as said as terminated follows U.S. lawmakers' inquiries in 2020. Really? Have they? Because I've seen a whole bunch of evidence that you guys are still in a very open, very public streaming deal over there, but hey, that's that's for you guys to do, obviously. A few NBA stars have also been censured as their then- Oh, as then general manager for the Houston Rockets sent out a pro Hong Kong tweet that triggered Beijing's retaliation. Yep, that was Daryl Morey. Uh, for at the time, he was general manager of the Houston Rockets tweeting out something, and then he had the hashtag free Hong Kong. And then uh, at the end of that season, he was mysteriously, even though Houston was definitely on the come up, he was mysteriously let go from his position. Fucking weird. And now he's working his magic with the... Uh, Philadelphia 76ers who were right up at the top alongside the previously mentioned Brooklyn Nets as at the top of the Eastern Conference so it's not from his abilities it's just what was the one thing he said that might have ticked off the league and might have compromised things especially for the Houston Rockets who had the first I'm not entirely sure if he was the first but he was definitely the first prolific Chinese player Yao Ming of course of course it couldn't have anything to do with that at all and then, of course, yeah, you have uh, Enos Cantor who's doing Yao Ming's work out there, putting on uh, a whole bunch of different goofy shoes out there, trying to make a statement. But NBA don't care. They'll just say, oh, it's just a minority owner. It doesn't really much matter. He just owns 10%. Don't worry about him. But uh, yeah, under the table, is like, good. That just means that you're sucking up a little bit closer to China and we can go ahead and milk them because they really like those uh, hoops that we put up on the wall. So the concentration camps. But that's the dichotomy you get with the NBA. You get their owners saying that China's not a problem in so many words. And then you get one of their star athletes saying, I'm just going to go ahead and wait off here to the side. And eventually his posterity pays off. And then on the other side, yeah, it's just a blind eye that gets turned. So that's the NBA in a nutshell. But let's talk about Michigan for a second. And um, yeah, it's really starting to look Cuomo-esque over there. God, I hope it ends the same way. But I couldn't imagine those poor pricks that had to get uh, their ass squeezed by Bruce Campbell. That's got to suck. With that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.